My name is Ryan Burke and I just love guitars. That's why I'm traveling the whole world to try as many as I can. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum Road Case. This episode is brought to you by Gun Street Wiring Shop. Unlock your guitar's hidden tones with an expertly crafted custom wiring harness. Tysco Pedals. I use them. I love them. Maybe you will too. Tour Gear Designs and their amazingly small and flat patch cables. And... Big Ear Pedals with their mysterious multi-effect, Albi. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and right now I'm at Pitbull Audio here in San Diego. I'm on the road, I'm doing my road tour kind of series here, or at least trying to start it. I thought it might be fun to go to, you know, guitar shops and shoot content instead of, you know, going to NAMM and, you know, other events and stuff like that, which I can't do this year because of <laughs> you know, all this stuff going on. So anyways, uh, Pitbull is, on lockdown, on quarantine. They're doing online stuff. They're doing a uh, pickup purchases for people who want to pick up stuff at the door. Um, but I get to hang out, but I get to hang out here in the shop all by my lonesome and just mess around with stuff, which I think is a pretty uh, fun deal for someone like me, a video boy. So anyways, in this video, I'm gonna shoot out some very, 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 very affordable guitars. I thought I'd start with the Channel Classic the Epiphone SL has a tag for 119, 120 bucks. These were 99 bucks when I covered mine two years back, something like that. Someone, you know who you are, in the uh, in the premiere comment section, all my videos has been bugging me to revisit these guitars, specifically ones with a matte finish. This one has a matte finish, so this is for you. Uh, let's see if it's any good. I haven't tuned it yet or anything. That's not terrible. The uh, the one that I got, the frets were a roller coaster on it. I had to do fret leveling on it, which I've never had to do with a guitar of any price point. Um, the action on this isn't amazing, but it's not as bad as mine was. I still would prefer to lower the action on this guitar. And that's when I really discovered uh, the fret leveling issues. But it's, it's low enough to be totally playable right now.
The pickups on these are pretty low output, kind of thin sounding. If you're going for a spaghetti Western sound, it'll do it for you. Um, I don't think most people are gonna love the sound of these pickups. Uh, it's kind of an acquired taste. That low output, kind of bright. That's some overdrive from the Tysco overdrive. plays all right. It plays better than I remember mine playing. I don't think it has anything to do with it being a matte finish. I think maybe they've just uh, figured out the design a bit more or just at this price point, you're gonna get quality drift. You just are. From specific guitar to individual guitar, there's gonna be a drift in quality when you're paying 120 bucks a guitar. Next up, A guitar that I just pulled out of a box off to the side here a minute ago. A PV Raptor. PV Raptor Plus. I didn't even know they still made these. I think this is like 130, 129, something like that. If I'm wrong, I'll flash the price up. It definitely needs a tune. All right, tuned up. HSS layout here, white pit guard on black finish, strat style bridge on here, satin finish on the neck, frets on this are sharp, much sharper than the Epiphone SL. Oh boy, those bite, those bite into you a little bit. Yeah, these, uh, these are not a fantastic fret experience. Let's see how it sounds though. Oh, am I sure I tuned that? All right, that'll be better. I had the D string tuned to B. Well, the pickup output is way better than the Epiphone. Well, Better is subjective, way higher. Here, it's slipping out of tune already. I mean, it just came out of a box. The uh, SL was actually hanging on the wall, so it should be more stable. More of like a distortion on this with the uh, the Rev G2. the number two position. Middle. Number four. Uh, and neck position. And we'll do it with just a light overdrive. Number four. Middle. Two. And a bridge. I actually think the pickups sound kind of decent. For a couple bucks more, you're getting a better sounding guitar than the SL, in my opinion. I mean, that's subjective. 
Um, the neck is comfortable. The body's, you know, it's a strap format. It's comfortable. I'm not going to test out this, uh, this trim right now. I'm going to assume that you're not going to get a lot of great tuning stability out of this without making modifications. You've got to graphite the nut, you know, things like that. Um, but the fret ends on this are really the bummer. Oh man, they are, it's, it's, they're, they're not sticking out the end, but they're squared off and each edge of the square is sharp. So I don't know, take that information as you will. Sound wise, that beats the Epiphone, but fret wise, not so much. Next up, a Tajima. Now this represents a fairly decent jump in price. I think these are right around like 170 to 200, something like that. This one's fresh out of the box. It's going to need a tune. All right, I played these at the last Winter Nam, um, and I thought they were fun. But uh, the ones they had out at the booth, uh, I don't think they went through any kind of quality controller setup. They, I think they intended them to be uh, display only. And there I was at Nam playing around with them and trying to get an impression of them. So I'm curious to see how this holds up uh, here, out of box, in the moment. This is a you know traditional Strat layout, three single coil pickups. Glossy neck, tortoise pick guard, Six screw trim. All right. I mean, right away, that's a classic Strat sound. Up to the neck. Not as much quack as I'd like on the neck. Let's go all the way clean. Take the reverb off too. Yeah, that bridge pickup sounds very stratty. But there's something about the neck that's just missing that classic strat quack for whatever reason. The neck is very comfortable. Kind of like a full, fuller shape to it. Not huge, but it fills your hand nicely. The fretwork is pretty dang decent. The best so far of all these guitars. Nice and shiny, uh, smooth, squared off edges. I don't see any quality control issues with this. Nut looks, uh, you know, it looks better than the others, but still, you know, clearly a nut on an affordable guitar, the way it's cut. just came out of the box like 20 minutes ago and I'm gonna say that right off the bat I mean I'm gonna say it spend more this is the Woodstock series Tajima the 530 spend more a little bit more I mean I, I know it's almost twice as much as the SL but my first impressions are strong you're, you're getting a lot more guitar for the money with this, closer to 200 bucks.
stepping out of tune a little bit. Shouldn't be a surprise when it just came out of the box. And then I've got one more here. Might as well spend a little bit of extra time with another Tajima. 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 However you want to pronounce it. This is their offset style. Their 61 TW series. P90s. Three-way selector. And then a Variatone switch. This is another one I tried at NAMM. And it just wasn't ready to be played. It was, uh, it was falling apart on me. I honestly think they just grabbed some off the assembly line and like, oh, we're just gonna use these for display models. Let's see, uh, let's see how it holds up though. This is right out of the box. No one's done a setup on this here. Actually sounds like it's in tune. I'd have to read up on what that Variotone uh, slider does. But it seems like... Like an EQ adjustment to make those uh, P90s sound like various different pickups. We'll leave it on the one position for now. light drive. These, uh, these Tajimas have a bigger neck on them. They're a, a full feeling neck. If you're looking for a small neck, a really fast neck, probably not the way to go, but if you like a neck that fills your hand pretty decently, I like it. I, I like a bigger neck. It's not like a baseball bat feeling neck, but it's definitely not one of these thin, fast necks. If I'm sold on the vario tone thing. But it's neat to have options. I'm gonna say, uh, I mean, for the build quality, and the sound of the pickups, and the playability, these Tajimas, I, I, they, they cream the other two. They just do. That SL was better than the SL I had, but it still wasn't amazing. I don't, I don't feel inspired to buy one again, but these Tajimas for 170 to 200 or whatever they are, pretty good, not bad. I really like the color on this one too. It's the sort of thing where I might buy one of these just to get the body and do some mods around it or something. Two point trim on this, in theory might be more stable than the uh, you know, six screw trim. Cool stuff. All right, I'm gonna play out with this thing, find some surfy tones. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me a nasty comment, support us on Patreon. Uh, check out all the links down below for sponsors, for Pitbull Audio to thank them for uh, hosting me here. And uh, stay grounded. Bye everybody.